Not a difficult thing to do. Right. Just in general. I think just minimized. It's right there. Yeah. Hello or something. Hey, everybody. What's up? We're uh, rich. We're early. Yeah. We're on top of it today. Happens every now and then. It's crazy to think about us being on time or early. So, so last time you played something you hated. I did. I didn't hate it. I. <sighs> I didn't enjoy it. I still don't know why you even wanted to play it. Perspective. You thought it was going to be an Uncharted type game, right? Yes. You don't like Uncharted type games. Correct. Why? To see if I was right. All right. All right. <laughs> I I often talk about, you know, I mean, I talk about Uncharted. I talk about Laura, the, the, the newer Laura Croft series a lot. And a lot of that was based on assumptions. Okay. Okay. Gameplay footage I've seen, things I've heard from other people, and so. But now I know for sure. So when I, for, you know, in the future when I talk about the Laura Croft reboot, yeah, I can speak with authority. Okay, and I, I think that's important. They're saying it's Laura, not Laura. Lara, whatever. Anyway, I think that's important. Is every once in a while to, to just you know. Play something that I wouldn't normally play. Just who knows? It could be a thing, right? <laughs> it could. You could. Maybe I love. Maybe I would have loved it. Who knows? All right. Who knows what right. would happened, Rich? So, yeah, that's so, uh, that's all. Because I was playing uh, Orcs Must Die recently. Uh huh. Put me in the mood for another game where you just kill massive amounts of orcs. <laughs> and this is the shooter, right? This is the third person shooter? This is the third shooter? person shooter, yes. You've played this before. Yeah. Okay. I have. Cool. It's just something casual, kind of in the mood for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, like, all I've wanted to play recently, and I've, I've had a, a little bit of free time here and there. Yeah. The only thing I want to play is Rocket League. Yeah. That's it. And I, I it's like, no, I have like a good couple of hours. I should really get a few more missions in Witcher. And nope. Uh, the only thing my brain, like I immediately go to Rocket League every single time and I can't yeah. quite explain it. I'm just in a mood. We, we made that new button and I forgot to hit it. Showing the game. We made a special button. We made a special button. Just to show and hide the game, which we do sometimes. Well, there you go. Yeah, it's good. Nobody missed anything. They missed some intro text. Right. Or orcs. We got to do something about them orcs. Look, you got the guy? This is perfect time. <laughs> now space marines need to do something about them orcs. <laughs> it's lovely. It's a, it's a, this is a, this is lovely sci-fi just, just co-marrying with fantasy. Yeah. More, more so than Star Wars, even. Oh, yeah. No, Star Wars is just fantasy. This is... This is a, a, a beautiful marriage. You think there are more science fiction elements in, in uh, Warhammer? From, from the little I've seen of it, I would assume so. I It seems like their world building is eons beyond anything Star Wars has. I, I'm guessing that there is some flavor text that explains how their machines work. And what all the things do? Would I be correct in that assumption? There are what machines? How, or they <laughs> they explain how the machines work. I'm I'm not that deep in the damn lore. I'm really not. Oh, okay. I know I know about the figurines. I know it's a tabletop game. But yeah. This is this is really the only uh, Warhammer game I've I've played mm. through. I've 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 started playing the Dawn of War. Oh. And then it was a real-time strategy game, so that didn't last too long. Right, right. Yeah. That's the best part. Even the 40k characters don't know how the machines work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So maybe it is a little more on the fantasy Oh, they, they have their machines. They put, like, little blessings on them. Like, a little wax stamp with, like, a prayer sheet hanging down from it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You know what? That's great. The 
green screen could use a little futzing, but I'm not gonna futz with it now. Not like that bad. Oh, it's fine. It'll, you know, it'll be fine. Has the green screen been turned on? The light is on on the green screen, but... Oh, come on. Do I really need to adjust some buttons here? No. No, you don't. No, I, I do. Why? My, my little grab move is not working. Oh, oh, you need to adjust those? I thought you were asking if you needed to adjust the green screen. And I was going to say no. Yeah, shit. But if you need to adjust some some re rebinding, I think I, I think I need to leave actual the actual freaking game before it'll let me do that. Unfortunately. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. yeah. God damn it. Quit mission. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean you're not too far, and that's all right. That's all right, Rich. It's fine. You're right, Hackbot. Everything's fine all the time. I don't know why it forces me to leave the game before I can adjust that, but that's who you know. That's that's, that's a that's really a, a mystery of coding that only people who know how to code will know. <laughs> I'm sure it has something to do with initializing something. Uh, yeah, I watched Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood growing up. I think everybody did, <laughs> you um, know. I'm j I'm just going easy for a casual playthrough before I, everyone gets your panties in a bunch. I've beaten this on normal Rich, there, multiple times, there are a few bunch. times. I know. There are already a bunch. I know. Did you watch Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood growing up? Not really. Really? Yeah, oh. not really. Oh. Uh, I did. Uh, I, I've heard nothing but phenomenal things about the documentary. I've heard nothing but phenomenal things about him as a human being. Also, him. Well, that's kind of the phenomenal part of the documentary. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like you 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 always thought that Mr. Rogers was like the greatest guy, and as it turns out, he was even better. <laughs> and it's just you know like personal <laughs> stories and of just him being a good dude, you know. Uh, I haven't seen it. Uh, I don't. I'm not, I'm not really going to go out of my way to see it. I'll probably wait till it gets to video on demand. By me. Because, uh, just, you know, I'm going to enjoy it, but I, I don't enjoy it enough to pay, like, $10 to see it, you know? You know? Is it in theaters now or something? I believe it's in theaters now. Okay. I kind of wanted to see that. It's, uh, you know, Milwaukee's never the first to get any movie. <laughs> weren't, they, weren't they making a movie with uh, Tom Hanks as Mr. Rogers? I think that's new. They're making. They're making. They're making. So the, both things. Are, the, the documentary, I, I'm, not, I'm not, I didn't like mistakenly think they were making a movie, but they really <laughs> just made the documentary. Both of them are things that have been made, or at least one of them is being made. One of them is uh, one of them is still in the rumor slash pre-production phase, I believe. Okay. So, I don't uh, I don't know if we've seen any like a trailer or any like production stills from the Tom Hanks one. The the documentary will probably be better. Oh God, yeah. But oh yeah, I don't think that's bad casting. <laughs> well, Tom Hanks, who is also <laughs> just the best. <laughs> That's a, that's a very similar thing you hear about Tom Hanks. Is Oh, he's just the best. Yeah. But, yeah, the documentary is supposed you know, to be fantastic. You know what I heard from our chat? What? Before. That originally Forrest Gump was going to be played by John Travolta. I'm just thinking, doesn't that just ruin the movie? Doesn't that movie just lose all, like, it, the movie, you, you've cast Tom, uh, uh, John Travolta as, as uh, Forrest Gump. Uh -huh. The movie loses 80% of its heart just instantly. Without a doubt. I, like, there's no if ands, or buts about it. John Travolta on his best day is no Tom Hanks. No, I, yeah. I, I, I agree that he could play stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's too stupid to play stupid. <laughs> He, d he can't even do that. I don't think he has it in him. Yeah, that's... that's uh, My movie going money and time is going to go see Sorry to Bother You. Have you heard about that? No. Oh, man, it's it's the indie this, movie. His career is dead again. I'm talking about Travolta still. Oh, no, no. This oh. is a whole different thing. But we can we can stay on Travolta if you like. His career is dead again. Yes. He's, he's back to making 
awful, awful schlock. Yeah. Um, you know, he's still around, though. It's it's not it's not like before Pulp Fiction where he was just gone. Well, that's not entirely true. It's mostly true, but it's not entirely true. He's hanging out in those Look Who's Talking movies. <gasps> yeah, well... That was like life support for his <laughs> career. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. Dude, we got a heartbeat. <laughs> Give me 50 cc's of Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> <laughs> no, Quentin Tarantino was the, the radical surgeon who came in at the last yeah. minute. <laughs> I have a, a, a risky and dangerous operation <laughs> that's either going to kill him or turn him superhuman for five years. But it's mostly risky and dangerous for my movie. <laughs> that's true. That's really true. Ah, I think Tarantino could have made gold from it. He, he's, he's too talented. He'd make gold from it. Even if Travolta gave a shitty performance. Uh, but no, the 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 new like indie movie to watch recently is a movie called Sorry to Bother You, and it is this surreal comedy uh, about a, a there we go making their way in the world of telemarketing. And just by the trailer alone, it looks phenomenal. It's gonna have some really neat visuals. So Sorry to Bother You is the movie to see if you got time to see the movie. It's this, yes, it's this year's Get Out. It's the indie movie to fawn over. It's going to be great. Or suck. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. It looks great. So, I'm excited to see that. Yeah. I'm excited to see that one. I have in the interim, Rich. Okay. To start off the conversations tonight, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this back around. But I, what I want to I want to plant a seed into you. Did you ever watch Mr. Show? No, I heard about it a bunch. The, you know, David Cross, Bob Odenkirk yeah. sketch comedy show from long lost ago. Uh, Mr. Show is this you know wonderful, uh, absurd and. Uh, uh, incredibly well-written sketch comedy show. Uh, it is also a sketch comedy show that I have never once laughed at. All right? Be with me here. Right. Because every sketch is so clever. Like, the writing is really clever and interesting, and all the sketches, you just go, wow, that's super funny. I get that. But I never laughed at it. It, was, it never made me laugh. It was too clever to make me laugh. It's too clever for its own good. Well, you know, like there, there's one of those, That's it's a, a famous old Mel Brooks saying, uh, wit is shit, funny is money. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter how witty you are. If you're, if you're not making people laugh, it doesn't count, right? Okay. So I took some time here and I, I watched a couple more episodes of The Venture Brothers. Okay. I watched the two episodes you told me to watch. Okay. The, the one with the, the, the garage sale. Uh-huh. And the one with the ghost. Yes. And I have come to the conclusion that okay. it is a very clever show. Okay. That I don't... That you don't like? And you know what? That's fine, Jack. I, I hear you. I That's hear fine. You. Yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of it has to do... You know, something I, I was talking about a little bit earlier. Something I think it has to do is just the time in which it was made and in which I'm watching it now. And I think had I seen this 10 years ago when it came out, yeah. I might have thought it to be incredibly funny and clever because it was 10 years ago it was doing stuff that not many people were doing. Yeah. But I think now people who have taken cues from the Venture Brothers, like it's so far past that, it's no longer... Based on everything we know about Jack, he should love the Venture Brothers. That's what I thought. Yeah. It's fine. I, you know, I mean, I'm really not. Oh, we need to like. I'm not gonna do that shit. 
If you don't like Gar- Ghost of the Sargasso, you're not going to like the show. I was... One of the first ones I saw, but that episode, after that episode, I, I was in. Sure, sure. And, like, that was that was one episode that got a mild chuckle out of me. Uh-huh. Um, I, I, believe I, I believe I guffawed. I, <laughs> you know, it got that when, uh, when the pirate had to uh, stick his hand up, up uh, Patrick Warburton's butt, and then he used him as a weapon. I thought that was... I got a little laugh out of me. Yeah, him. yeah. I enjoyed that. But mostly, mostly I'm watching, I'm just going, oh, yeah, this is really clever. <laughs> All right. And All so, right. like, I'm, I, I'm not saying that I, I dislike it and I definitely appreciate the comedy, <laughs> but it's just not making me laugh. You're, you're allowed to dislike it. No, no, no. no, no I don't want to <laughs> go that far. I don't, you know, because usually if I dislike something, I have, a, I have a, a decent enough reason for it. And I watch it, and uh, you're right. It, sh- it should be something I'm super into. Yeah. But it's just like, yeah, it's fine. All right. It's fine. All right. Jack is more of a Squidbillies guy. I've seen some Squidbillies. That's that's just absurdity. I don't think that's... I'm, I'm, that's more absurd than comedy. There's a new She-Ra? I loved Frisky Dingo. Frisky Dingo is fantastic. I'll, I'll be with you there. Frisky Dingo was great. Archer? Uh, it's alright. Alright! Same people behind Frisky Dingo. Oh yeah? Yeah. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. Very similar shows. I didn't get too deep into Archer before I was like, eh, not my thing. Mm-hmm. So. Some, uh, I just remember some, they had some decent lines. Got a, got some laughs out of me. And of course, everyone loves H. John Benjamin. He's just, yeah. you know. He's, he's, got can, a, he's got a magical voice. He does. Not, a, like, not just a magical voice, it's just his, del- his delivery, his timing, his cadence is just everything. C Lab 2021 is fantastic. I, st- I think I still have the first two seasons on DVD because I like I was that into C Lab 2021 that I bought the DVDs when they came out. Oh, I have I have no horse in any. She-Ra race. I didn't, you know, I was not a big He-Man person. Uh-huh. Um, if there may, yeah, this is very much like the Thundercats thing, where like everybody's crazy about the Thundercats, and like I just don't care. Uh, I was of the age for the Thundercats, and I didn't like the Thundercats that much. Ah, okay. Apparently, they're rebooting She-Ra. That that's more news for my wife. She was a big She-Ra fan, so I'll have to really? let, I'll have to let her know there's a new She-Ra cartoon. <laughs> Do you have a horse in the Bojack race? Uh, you know, you know what? I've never seen it. Never seen Bojack. Oh, Bojack's great. That's uh, Will you'll, Arnett, you'll, right? You'll absolutely hate it, <laughs> but it's amazing. <laughs> That's Will Arnett, right? <laughs> I'm like a season or two behind right now. Oh, okay. It's, I've seen the first two seasons completely, and it's really, it, it gets really good. Okay. Jack hates all good things. It's true. I hate all good things. So it's what you get. It's what you get. I have seen Nathan for you. You're, are you basically just trying to like list a bunch of things that I do like to, to, to make up for the fact that I wasn't super into the Venture Brothers? Nathan for you is fantastic. Yes. Great show. Good premise. Good jokes. I'm think they're, I think they're curious how many other good things you'll hate. Fa- a fair number of them. <laughs> Everybody's different, man. Everybody's different, and everyone likes different things. <laughs> Everybody likes different things. I like Nathan for you a lot. It's a fine show. Do you, do you ever watch Nathan for you? No. 
He ha- he has some fantastic episodes. It's it's what v- what is Nathan for you? Nathan for you is like how do I even describe it? It's 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 perform it's corporate performance art and <laughs> uh like uh for example one of his episodes um you and you hate Mr. Show. No, I don't hate Mr. <laughs> Show. <laughs> I, I think Mr. Show is uh, inc- incredibly clever and well-written. It just never made me laugh. Okay. Um, no, but Nathan for you is... Uh, he. The whole shtick of his show is he, he wants to help people. And, you know, this is his show is about him helping people, right? And so there's one episode where he wants to help a failing coffee chain. Or, or a failing coffee store, right? Mm-hmm. And so he comes up with an idea to call the coffee store not Starbucks. Okay. And he's going to get around any sort of trademark law by calling it performance art. Okay. And satire. See, because he's satirizing Starbucks. And so he, or, or no, or he calls it like crappy Starbucks or something like that. Okay. And so, and then he, he like, his team go in there and they change the whole coffee store to be crappy Starbucks. Oh, that's it. Dumb Starbucks. And they had the dumb Frappuccino. And, the, and it, was, it was just this absurd, like, him talking with lawyers and him trying to figure out how they can call a coffee store Starbucks and not get in trouble. Okay. He did, uh, he did one show where he wanted to uh, do a magic trick. Right. He wanted to, like, get out of some handcuffs and do a magic trick. But he says, you know, the problem with uh, magic tricks is there's no real stakes. So, like, if you think about Harry Houdini, you know, he would dunk himself in water and he'd have to get out of his handcuffs to free himself. But if he dies, he's still a legend. That's, that's not big enough stakes. And so he set up this insane mousetrap thing to where if he didn't get out of his handcuffs in time for his magic show, he would expose himself to a minor and go to jail for, uh, for, <laughs> for being a, a, a sex pervert. <laughs> Okay. It's insanity. It's pure insanity. And I'm not doing it any justice, of course. Yeah. Um, but it's it's great. It's great stuff. It was about giving himself a goal with actual consequences. Right. So if he was unable to get out of his handcuffs in time, he would expose himself to a minor. <laughs> And I'm presuming this is all staged. This is like a sitcom. Uh, no, no, it's it's all done in the it's all done in the style of like one of those like house flipper reality shows, you know, where okay. it's, it's shot, okay. you know, where he has a couple talk. And I'm sure most of it is staged, but you know, he rides that line between what's staged and what's not. He like does. I, I can't imagine they would actually take that chance. Oh, I can't imagine either. But who knows? Like he designed, he had he had a, a company design him a robot. That would remove his pants. Because no one could remove his pants for him or else they would be an accomplice. <laughs> and even the company that designed the robot, he had to do it in such a way where that wasn't the robot's initial intent. It was it's so crazy. It's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Uh Neom Canadian. You can just leave. Bye. What's the problem, though? Oh, nothing. I'm, I'm curious. What's the problem? Neo Canadian says, Sometimes I think this show would be so fucking awesome without Jack's yapping. Oh, okay. Okay. And so, what I'm saying is, I'm here. I'm yapping. You can leave. If you weren't yapping, I would just be quietly playing this. Right. I'm not a, I'm not a big talker. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. I guess that's what I was, that wasn't the point I was trying to get across <laughs> is this is the product that you're viewing. If you don't like it, you are free to go. Ban him. Eh. It's fine. I was actually thinking about it for a second. <laughs> but I decided against it. Jack, why are you an enemy of free speech? Uh, because this isn't free speech. This is a. a <laughs> that and free speech are two very different things, my friend. Don't show you get it on me. I got nothing. I got, <laughs> I got nowhere to go with that, and I'm sorry. No, I'm not going to watch Community. 
I'm not gonna watch any of the thing that you want me to watch. I'll hate it. I watched most of the first season of Community and hated it. Yeah. But then everyone said, no, no, no. If you, if, if you watch the whole first and second season, then watch the third season, it gets really good for the first half of the fourth season. Like that's what, uh, and, but then it gets bad again. But then it comes back good for the sixth season. It's crazy. They never did do that movie they were talking about doing, did they? They were talking about a community movie? Wasn't that, wasn't that the whole thing? He wanted to do six seasons in a movie or something? Oh, Dan Arwen? I don't know. I just don't know. I just know it's so messed up. You know, I like, and uh, there, there's fans of community that will like, just say like, oh yeah, this season sucks. You can skip this season. Half of, like, the, there's basically like a list, like an episode list. Like, just watch these episodes and it's great. And I don't have the time for that. I ain't got no time. Dan Harmon said he's waiting till all the actors are washed up. <laughs> well, he's mostly there. I mean, what are, what are they doing nowadays? Jillian Jacobs got some regular work. So, and um, Talk Soup Guy, what, what's his name? You know who I'm talking about? I know who you're talking about. I don't know his damn name. I think he's working, but like Danny Pudi's not doing anything. The, hard, the hardest thing will be um, Donald Glover, because he's got his own show now. He's got his own fame now. He's fucking Lando. He's not coming back. From Lando? No, his career isn't coming back from Lando. Oh god. Him being Lando was the mildest blip on his on his radar. <laughs> if anything, him being Lando is what led to their mild ticket sales. <laughs> Joel McHale, that's what his name is. Thank you. He's <laughs> that's right. He's Miles Morales' uncle in the MCU. He's the Prowler, man. He's the... And he's got a nephew that that lives in this neighborhood. That line always bothered me. That he's got a nephew? No, that that was his line. Well, they had to introduce Miles, but they didn't. He, like you know, it was it was an Easter egg. Right? I know. But why not just say I have family in this neighborhood? Yeah. So the fans could say Miles, Miles, Miles. Yeah, but the fans knew that already. Uh, what do you want from me? What do you What do you want from me? I want you to to rewrite that line <laughs> because you wrote the movie. I'm just I'm just telling you why the line exists. That's all I can do. I understand why the line exists. But it's just And so the the dumb person sitting next to you in the theater can just start obnoxiously clapping. <laughs> he's talking about Miles Morales and he's also <laughs> Spider-Man! That's what he's talking about! <laughs> Thor's hammer! Woo! What? Infinity War. That's what happened during my screening of Infinity War. Thor showed up with his hammer. His new hammer. <laughs> I think it's insane. The I think the movie going experiences that you have are, are an anomaly. <laughs> are an absolute anomaly. Technically, it was an axe. That's right. The, I, I've only had one scenario in which someone was being obnoxious like that during a movie, and it was during so it was during the bit of solo that I saw. And I'm pretty sure the man sitting behind me was of special needs. Yeah, and and was very excited for all the Star Wars things. Yeah, so I didn't make too big a deal out of it. 
Yeah, you see that hanging off of his shoulder pad, that little fabric? Yeah, that's like a little prayer thing that's on there with a wax seal. Oh yeah, you can see the wax seal too. Yeah. We need to reach that Titan. Because they have this armor, they just didn't build it. Right. Okay, I get it. It's something old and quasi-mystical to them. <laughs> Their technology, that's great. That's fantastic. Uh, Jonathan, 89, says, Hi, Jack and Rich. What did you think of the No Man's Sky Next trailer? I have not seen it. This is the first I'm hearing about it. Uh, so, is it a sequel or is it an update? Do you know about it? No, I don't care about it either. Oh, okay, great. Uh, also, J.J. Abrams is producing a movie called Overlord. The trailer makes it looks like a... Oh, I've heard about that. A World War II... Nazi zombies. Wolfenstein ripoff. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's, I mean... Uh, high, high, high quality Nazi zombies. <laughs> yeah, I'm done with the... A high quality Nazi zombie B movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this could finally be JJ fulfilling his lifelong dream of just doing exactly what Spielberg did. <laughs> high, uh, high budget schlock. High budget schlock. Yeah, yeah. This is it. This is his opportunity. <laughs> Spielberg never did do Nazi zombies. He never did Nazi zombies. Uh, you know, he did killer theme parks though, <laughs> so he's good. Easy might be too easy. We'll see. We'll see when we get later, though. Oh, okay. JJ, oh wait. Well, is JJ directing or is JJ just producing? This is the important question for you, chat. Hold on. Let me. What is this called again? Over. Overlord. Who's directing it? Jules Avery is directing it. Who is most known for making the movie? I've not heard of any of these movies. <laughs> That's the. I've not heard of any of these movies that he has directed. Great! Dead Snow already did Nazi zombie stuff years ago. Yes, but the the difference is in the budget, my friends. Spiel, the thing Spielberg is known for is, uh, well, and I suppose, you know, Lucas uh, with his Star Wars is taking things that have historically been low budget schlock and putting a little class into them. Yeah. That's, that's why we like Indiana Jones and Star Wars and Jurassic Park and all that fun stuff. Is you take you take the schlocky idea and then you give it a little bit of a budget. So uh, while many people have done Nazi zombies, have they given it the big budget treatment? That's the question. But uh, I don't know anything about No Man's Sky next, and I also don't care. No Man's Sky was such a bad time. I'm sorry. Well, you were there, too. <laughs> you, know, you know. I know. What are they changing? Is it too late? I think No Man's Sky generated too much ill will. Too late for us or too late for people for in them. general? For, for them? people in general. They burned their bridges. They've already burned their bridges. Okay. It's, it's not too late, Rich. What it is, is too soon. Everyone is still smoldering over No Man's Sky. Hmm. Is what I'm going to say. Hmm. That's what, that's what I'm going to say. But, the, it, like, let's say they put out this 
whatever it is, whether it be an update or a, they've been they've been quietly updating the game. I've been considered picking it up, but I don't want to spend sixty dollars on it. Okay, so let, let's assume No Man's Sky Next is like an update that adds a bunch of content, right? What'll happen is, you know, some some reviewers will do something, some streamers, some hardcore fans will, will play it, and then slowly it will trickle, trickle out, and then maybe next year, like next summer, people will have calmed down and go, okay, we're ready now. <laughs> we're ready for No Man's Sky next. It's being changed to third person. Multiplayer is actually being added. So what are I, they doing to make the world not feel empty? Because, I don't know, I'm not that excited about No Man's Sky in third person. <laughs> Actually, when it comes to space flight, I prefer to be in the cockpit. Right. Yeah. I very much prefer to be in the cockpit. Maybe it's, hopefully it's a toggle option. Okay. Okay. I would hope. I mean, it, if it was already in first person, it's not like they would take that away. Well, I mean, I guess they could do anything they want. Yeah. They need the world, the world to not feel empty and pointless. Yeah. Agreed. <clears throat> oh, fuck you. Uh, so, I don't know. Yeah, there, I don't... For, for me, I don't think there's much... For, for me, it's done. Like, it had its chance. Yeah, and and I just can't imagine tr giving it another go, another real go. Oh, I love that kill. Oh, that was fine too. Nice. Uh, just because there's so many other games that I actually want to play, but you know, maybe for other people, eventually it'll get a get a chance. I did see that over Hayes Shadow of War, the the new uh, the. Uh, the new Mordor. The the new Mordor um, just patched out all the loot boxes. Oh, okay. After after poor reception. <laughs> so we did it. <laughs> Congratulations, everyone. You beat them back for another week. <laughs> we gotta always fight, Rich. Always fight. What happened to LaCroix? I still drink it all the goddamn time. I don't know, Cactus Mutt. What happened to him? Today I today I have just regular regular old plain non bubbly water like a chump. Did you figure out if it's mandatory to have the little toy fighter in that new Star Fox game? Because that's my No Man's Sky. I, I did not. I haven't looked into that too much. You probably do. They want to sell things. Yeah. But I wonder if there's a way to, like, digitally buy the thing so you don't actually have to buy the toy. <sighs> no, because it's a little bit more money if you have the toy. <laughs> that's probably the correct <laughs> answer. I just don't know if that's the correct answer. <laughs> that would be... <laughs> That would be the business <laughs> sense. Or the toy is available like a month before the digital is. Yeah. So, you know, then you get your stuff. Then you get your stuff. Did you, did you, uh, you probably didn't because you don't care about it. I, I don't even remember where I read this. Uh, World of Warcraft is going to a, uh, a monthly subscription model. Okay. Which, weren't uh, they weren't they before World of Warcraft? Well, see, here's the interesting thing. World of Warcraft you needed, you know, a monthly subscription, you know, to play online, but then you also had to buy the game. So it was actually both. Oh, okay. You oh, oh, okay. So now it's free, but 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 uh the, you you have to you still have the monthly subscription, but you no longer have to buy the game separate. I thought that was an interesting choice. That must mean that they're uh, they're on their way out. I'm <laughs> just trying to get long run. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah.
and it's it's not for it's not for every single part of World of Warcraft, but for most of the campaigns, you can just pay the monthly subscription and do most of the campaigns. So. I thought that was interesting. I, I don't think I will ever play World of Warcraft in my life, but I thought it was interesting. Yeah. A neat little... A neat little, a neat little thing, possibly just to build up hype for a new expansion, or you know, they they they've reached critical customer mass, <laughs> and this is their last attempt to get new players in. Well, you don't hear about it much anymore, so I'm assuming it's just dying down naturally. Mm -hmm. Dying a, a nice, peaceful, natural death. Absolutely, just uh, as it should of old age, slowly surrounded by its loved ones. Huh? Absolutely. No, yeah, absolutely. It's an apt analogy, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that does. That reminds me of uh, they. They have. Uh, they've teased uh, a thing from the new Spider-Man game, Rich. Okay. And it's uh, it's the original Spider-Man outfit. Oh, good. So, <laughs> because I've been bitching so much. Yes, I, I someone someone showed me. <laughs> someone showed me uh, that it just because of you. They were actually not thinking about doing it, but they heard you, Rich Evans, loud and clear, and so you will get the original Spider-Man outfit. It, it looks very similar to like the MCU Spider-Man. So, yeah, looks good. Rich did it, everyone. I want to see it. Pull up an image. Someone, I think someone tweeted it at me. Hold on. I'll find it. <clears throat> uh, do, 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 do. Okay. I approve. <laughs> you know, it's a little too red. It's, oh, God. It's, like, it's it's a little too red. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little too red. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. The red's so vivid. Oh, God. The red doesn't go with that blue at all. It's so colorful. <laughs> I can't handle it. It'll be fine. <laughs> can't be pleased. Rich Evans. Uh, Holly Con. Holly Icon. Says, I like Rich and Jack being Rich and Jack in whatever form or way that manifests. Oh, well. Even Rich's eventual snarky comeback to this combat. To, to this comment. Fraud, my hack. I don't know if Rich has got I, any. I have no snark for that. There you go. This game a knockoff of Gears of War. Do you see me taking cover like a like a wuss? <laughs> like a like a goddamn coward. <laughs> Classic Gears of War. More uh, parchments on the machinery. Parchments. <laughs> That's great. I, got no, I actually don't have any. I don't have any problems with Gears of War. It's okay. Gears is okay. I I have fond memories of the first Gears of War. Yeah. 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 It's fine. It's perfectly fine. Uh, it's a it's a fun action game. You go. You shoot the things. You chainsaw the guys. Boom. You, you go to a new level. Get new guns. And boom, boom, boom. Chainsaw the guys.
They did something well enough that everyone lazily rips it off for their awful cinematic games. Exactly. Exactly. Except for with none of the, the character <laughs> or pacing. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> right, basically. <laughs> That's not a joke. Yeah, I know it's not a joke. <laughs> That's why I said it. <laughs> no, I... I uh, I, I remember happily playing the first two. I think even in the second one, I did some of the online multiplayer. And then when the third one came out, I just didn't care. And so I didn't play it. Jack, why do you hate the Beatles? I don't hate the Beatles. I respect the Beatles uh, quite a bit. I think the joke is something else beloved that Jack hates. Oh, well, I think no, I, like, I think I've talked about this before, where it's just like, I'm just not like, I don't know if I'd ever choose to listen to the Beatles. But if they're on, they're, the Beatles are fine. I don't love the Beatles. Do I have any good nightmare airport flying stories? No. Uh, oh, I mean, yes. The answer to that is yes. Yes, I do. I do have a good... Just having kids on an airplane? That's what it is. I, and I, I actually, I think I've told this story before, which is uh, when when my oldest was very young. I mean, maybe like one and a half young. Uh -huh. We took him on his first airplane ride, and it was a long airplane ride. Well, it was, and it was a two-parter. I think one was Milwaukee to Chicago. And then the other one was was Chicago and far away, right? Yeah. And uh, we Milwaukee Chicago flight was great, but he was very tired and sleeping, right? But the the flight went perfectly great, and we flew very early in the morning. And then the the next the next flight it was it was daytime out. We're getting ready to go, and you know we open up the window. We're pointing out all the stuff. Little little baby Parker is just feeling great mm -hmm. about the world. And then this child witnesses the most horrific thing a child could witness, which is the earth vanishing in front of his eyes. Oh, look, I'm with him. <laughs> um, and he was not quite prepared for the earth to disappear. And he's only one and a half. So it's not like we can explain what's going on. And he spends the rest of the four hour flight screaming at the top of his lungs. Un, un, unquenchable, un, yeah, unstoppable, un unconsolable, and it wasn't you know like everyone tried coming up to us like about you know oh is it his ears does he need to chew something it's not his ears we checked you know checked that do we does he need, what do, what does he need does he need to be like you know everyone's trying to help everyone's trying to be very helpful they just want him to shut up of course they of don't course. care about you no no they don't care about uh, me but but then you know just having to re-explain to everyone no no it's he's just he's so fr he's frightened he's frightened of everything. Um, and it was terrible. It was a it was a, a really terrible experience. I know those poor people on that plane. Eh. <laughs> also, fuck them. <laughs> That's what I say. Fuck them. Uh. So. Yeah. That was that was really bad. The. Uh, Bam! I love that one. I love that one. There Chainsaw is. to the gut, followed up just by slamming your fist on their head. <laughs> uh, the very, very awful part for those people is a lot of them were on our return flight. We saw the same people. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, and it was, and they saw us, they, they saw the baby again, and they were just like, shit. The but, you know, if you think about it, it's just four hours of their <laughs> lives. Like, <laughs> so fuck them. Just four hours is fine. Uh, but it was it was not a good time, and but you know of course now even after that the the next flight we took was fine and with the new kid flight was fine and they they're great flyers now you know, of course now they're old so. But yeah, that was a that was a terrible time. That's why quaaludes were invented. Eh. 
I I've I've heard I've I have heard of some parents who will like like keep their kid like awake extra late the night before wake him up extra early for a flight like get him really super crazy tired out and then maybe slip him a little night quill or something for a flight and man never have I wanted to more than that flight age limits on theaters don't bring your fucking baby toddler to a theater uh, and I agree with that I agree with that I think I think going to a movie and flying on a plane are two different, are two very different experiences. Uh, a theater, the entire point is that two hours in, while you're watching a movie. Yeah. Don't bring your baby to a movie. One, you're going to have to do shit. You won't be able to watch the movie fully. But a flight, you're going <clears throat> somewhere. People are going on vacation. A flight is a small part of a larger activity. We can deal with children. But no, don't do not take your baby to the theater. That's 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 just bad. That's bad for you as a parent. Like, get someone to watch a damn kid. I'm so sorry, to hardcore. Who says back back when I saw the Matrix in the theater, some asshole brought his kid who screamed throughout the entire movie, and you know like. That that would be that I'm a I'm a also a strict believer in talk to the manager like if if I hear a kid crying for more than ten minutes I would go straight to get someone like hey I paid my money <clears throat> yeah. to see the movie and this is what I'm getting go talk to someone get a free ticket you shouldn't bring a kid young enough to cry to a movie at all I agree I agree wholeheartedly but that's a that's a situation where you could also talk to someone. And they might not remove the kid, but you get a free movie pass. The theaters are, are us or at least they were really good at giving out free movie passes. Spice Babies appreciate good cinema. Agreed. Agreed. They, they do enjoy the finer things in life. <laughs> Go take your baby to see Hereditary. It's supposed to be great. It's just supposed to be great. And I, I mean, you know, also if you, if you got a baby, like that's that's one of those, you know, take them to the family movie night where they have cheap tickets and they show a kids movie, or take them to a, or an early showing, or do something. But babies, babies shouldn't be going to movie theaters easy as that easy as that captain president says hey jack and rich question number one xcom enemy unknown is a new generation streamlined update of the original xcom yes is there a new generation equivalent for master of orion 2 no some people might tell you otherwise. Not that I've played. How's that? Okay. <clears throat> that is a good answer. I've had trouble I've had trouble finding another Master of Orion style game that doesn't turn the combat into real time combat, which I hate. Um Okay. Uh also have either of you played Fable? Thanks again. I never got into it. I tried once. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I played it. I remember somewhat having a good time. I don't remember terribly much of it. If that gives you an idea of how much I enjoyed it. Yeah. From what I remember, kind of just generic fantasy fighter thing with some slight RPG elements that were all right. But I, eh, you know. I just, I really don't remember that much from it. Uh, yes, chat. I think the Master of Orion remake did have real-time combat. Firing 
Leandros, get the shell into that loader. I will cover you. Oh, I, I will forever treasure the little chicken chaser. Chicken chaser? I don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know. Try, I'm, I'm actually like trying. Oh, you know what? The only thing I remember, remember about Fable was in order to keep playing the game after you beat the final boss, you had to sit through the entire credits. And I didn't know that the first time I played it. And so I beat the boss and then, you know, quit out. And then when I tried to play again later, it saved before the boss battle. So I had to beat the end boss again. Hmm. So, and I said, oh, that's malarkey. But then I, I saw somewhere like, oh, if you just... You have to sit and wait and watch the whole credits, and then you can free roam after you beat the boss. But that's all. That's all I got. That's all I remember from Fable. <laughs> uh, Katara Aldele says you didn't have to watch you could have just put down the controller and eaten a sandwich that's true that's true after I beat the bus I didn't want to free roam oh I, I, I thought that was that was supposed to be one of the big things about Fable is you know Go wherever, do you know, it's your world. I know that was one of those things that, you know, they promised and never quite delivered on, but it's fine. Fine game. Everything's fine. All the time. Uh, Jack Triggers, I have not started a new uh, Batman animated series episode. I have not started a new one. I need to find a, a second episode, which I think uh, we were talking about maybe finding a Bane episode. That would be really funny, but I just need to find another episode. And uh, work stuff is uh, is starting to pick up, so I haven't had time. Okay. I haven't had time to make another Batman. I'll make another one, though. It's fine. <clears throat> Darn work stuff, Rich. Pfft, like a sucker. <laughs> Captain Titan, you are a man of your word, my lord. Thank you. What is your situation? That was my ultimately that was my favorite line, yes. It has to stop, Stromwell. It has to stop now. It has to stop, Cromwell! It has to stop now! Oh, I gave I gave his now a little sass, and I like it. <laughs> no. <laughs> See, you want just dumb. You're giving it too much personality. <laughs> dumb. I'm playing it subtle. <laughs> I have no idea why. I don't know. It felt right. It felt right to 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 do to try to to be true as I as true as I could to Christian Bale's version. I thought that was funniest. Christian Bale or Scooby Doo is the my 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 Batman Christian Bale is very close to my Scooby Doo. If you take out the <laughs> of Scooby Doo, that's Christian Bale's Batman. Mm -hmm. Oh, Shaggy, <laughs> where are we going, Shaggy? Right, that's Scooby Doo. Just take out the <laughs> and you go. Where are we going, Shaggy? Yeah. Where is what's happening? And that's Christian Bale's Batman. So I do. I try to put my teeth out a little bit. I'm on the bottom. 
Because that seems to work. Yeah, right, true. But then if it's a little hesitant, it's a little scooby doo. Right, it's a little woo. It's the exact same voice. Did the lieutenant not say these tracks went to the pump first? That thing is a battering ram. When my kids go to bed, that's the voices that I'm doing. Yep. Good night. Good night, Moon. Good night, Rattle. Good night, Spoon. <laughs> Their gear looks like StarCraft marine gear. Other way around, my friend. What's StarCraft marine gear? Big, big, bulky, fat. Oh, and it, and it looks power like suits. this. This, this was yeah. around first, is what you're saying? Yeah. Oh. Oh. You know, I was thinking about Batman today. Yep. I was thinking about Batman today. I was, I was doing some things, and I, I, I turned on a, a movie in the background, and I just, you know, kind of was randomly just wanted something on the background, and uh, a Justice League just came to HBO Go. So I was like, ah, you know, I'll pop that on in the background, just have something that I, I in no way need to pay any attention to, but, you know, yeah. I'll glance over from time to time. <clears throat> and you know what I was thinking? I was, I, was, I was watching, you know, Batman in the Justice League movie, and I was thinking to myself... The uh, Batman's costume needs a complete overhaul. Oh, in the Justice League movie? In, in a li live action Batman. Oh my god, he just jumped. I'm thinking that live action Batman needs a complete costume overhaul. Rethink it entirely. Uh, he always has. He's not. Probably the best one is the, the Batman vs. Superman Justice League kind of style. But even, and none of them are great. None of them are great, but even that one, like, uh, all of them err on the side of, like, you know, armor or softball gear, you know, like, that kind of stuff, right? And I'm thinking... Arkham City. I didn't, I didn't play Arkham City. It's very, very similar to Arkham Asylum, just, I think, a little bit more detailed. Sure, sure. I'm thinking we need to get rid of the notion that Batman has armor. Yeah. Uh, I think I think City is a nice compromise. It looks fabric, mm -hmm. but it looks sturdy. Yeah. But it doesn't look like he can't move in it. It doesn't look like he's bulletproof. And th uh, uh, that, like, as, a, as I'm watching Justice League, that's what I keep thinking about Batman's armor is, like, how can he even move in this stuff? Yeah. Right? Why do you, why do you think he can't? He can't. <laughs> why, no, why do you think in the, the, the classic Batman movies he turns like this? Yes, because it could. He, he literally can't turn his head. He couldn't turn his head. Right. <clears throat> and so, yeah, I'm, th I'm thinking uh, for, li you know, because it, it's something that we haven't seen live action. We haven't seen the perfect Batman suit live action. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. Far from it. And I think we need to go fabric. And we need to think more in the lines of stealth than armor. Yeah. That's Batman's whole deal. And I think actually, uh, what I was thinking to myself was the, maybe, maybe this whole like Batman armor situation is what has led away from Batman the detective overall. As they keep on thinking about his bat suits in terms of him fighting bad guys, right? Well, he, he needs armor. He's going to be fighting bad guys. They're going to be shooting at him. He needs armor. Where what you should be thinking is, how is Batman not going to fight? How is Batman going to get out of the fight or not be seen so he doesn't have to fight in the first place? That's the Batman that we want, right? And watching watching Ben Affleck in this ridiculously bulky suit just made me think, like, we need someone who's going to pull the trigger on a Batman suit that steps away from the armor. Who's going to do it? Who's going to be the director 
to have to have the courage to take off the armor. Who's gonna be the producer? Who's gonna be the producer to have the courage to take off the armor? Yes, Xenotrope says, Jack, are you implying that Batman spent years learning how to be stealthy as a ninja? Preposterous. <laughs> Absolutely preposterous. The Batman versus Superman, not the one he wears for the fight with Superman, but is generally what he wears in that. That's pretty much cloth. Uh, I think it's pretty similar to what he wears in Justice League, and it's it's bulkier than you think. It's bark. It's bulky. Oh, I know it's bulky. It's bulkier than you might be remembering. I'm saying they're halfway there. Maybe. Well, you know, what what the, what they are is ready for a reset. They're ready. They're ready to redo things and car they've and been, carve a new. They've image. been ready for years for a redo. Yeah. Put Batman in leggings, damn it. Doesn't need to be leggings. Just cloth. Take take a look at what he wears in the early Arkham games. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's what you do. My own my own opinion. It's that's tough just because obviously that's that's animated, you know, like you can't you can't base how something will look in the real world off of an off of a, a drawing, off of animation. It just doesn't work the same. You can just rip off, like, turret guns because you're this big, strong, ridiculous, comical guy. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Ah. That's, that's something I liked about the new Wolfenstein game. You could do the same thing. Just fucking rip off the turret guns and take them with you. Until they ran out of bullets, of course. Batman tights? Maybe tights? Maybe tights? Maybe just some sturdy slacks? You know, maybe just give him some slacks? You know, tighter, but sturdy. Maybe, maybe some pockets. Some bat, tr yeah, some bat trousers, <laughs> cargo pants. No, obviously, no. That's that's the wrong way to do it. Because then he's not Batman anymore. Then he's military Batman. Have you watched the fan film Batman Dead End? I have not. I don't know if I've seen any Batman fan films. It's got a decent Batman costume in it. Oh, okay. Nice. Is the Daredevil series the best modern live action representation of Batman then? No. The ninja side of things. <laughs> like when when Dare when Daredevil but you know, is it season one Daredevil? When he still had his, his awesome Daredevil suit? That was basically what year one Batman it was, mm -hmm. fighting wise. Matt Murdock didn't do any sort of detecting, <laughs> but you you do like a suit like that, add in some detecting, and you got year one Batman basically. Mm -hmm. The manufactorum still holds. Cannot hold for long. We must hurry. Yes, yes. Batman Dead End is the <clears throat> Batman versus Predator fan film. Batman fights Predator in an alley. Oh, 
Okay, I then. I think Joker's there, too, if I remember right. <laughs> oh, good. I mean, because he has to be. He's, <laughs> right. The, he's contractually obligated to be there anytime Batman's there. <laughs> Ooh, I love that thing. Oh, yeah. Little little happy floaty skull. Well, they, they take prisoners and they turn them into equipment. <laughs> No visible propulsion system on that skull. It's fine. Fantasy. Earlier I said this might be somewhat sci-fi. I take that back. It's got its foot heavy in the fantasy realm. Yeah. Thank you, Colonel Rich Mustard. I will save that link for later. Because AI is forbidden, they just lobotomize people to work kind of like AI. Hmm. I like it. <laughs> Rich, I see someone asking how you think this game has aged. Fine. It's not that old. It's old. Er. How yeah. old is it? 2011? Oh, never mind. Then it's not that old. I still think it looks all right. I'd say this game looks all right. And if it still plays all right, that's all you can ask for. What do we got here? We got Kai Bosch Malarkey says, if you could rewrite any story, what would it be and how would it end? That's just bait. That's just... Oh, uh, yep. That's, that's just bait. Sure is. Sure is, Rich. I would rewrite... Um, I would rewrite write Wonder Woman and get rid of the Ares fight. Boom, done. All right, great. Next. I'm good. I'm good. You're good? I'm good. Which is everything. We don't. Why? Yeah. Why? I know. Because they know. Because they want. They're, they're trying to poke the bear. I know. They're trying to get you to bear. They're trying to get you to bear. Did you catch Angry Joe being in the chat, Jack? He's a pretty solid and heavily followed video game reviewer. Intentionally can't be reviews, but always good. Oh, okay. Well, hi, Angry Joe. If you're still here. You never watched him? I, I don't know if I've ever seen an Angry Joe video. Yeah, no. He's been around. He's fun. Yeah? I got nothing against the Angry Joe. Okay. Well, Hello. Okay. <laughs> I, got, I got nothing against the Angry <laughs> Joe. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't. You know, I I just don't. I I've been on I've been on like a, a cooking show binge lately. That's like that's my YouTube time. Like I don't watch other reviewers or people who talk about <coughs> video games uh, or movies. I just want to watch cooking shows. There's there's this great there's this great series where a uh, uh, a professional pastry chef tries to remake candy foods in in her kitchen yeah like she tried to remake skittles like how do you make skittles <laughs> by yourself <laughs> that's that's a cute idea oh it's it's amazing she did one on uh kit cats <laughs> it's great it's been fantastic i think it's bon appetit is the name of the youtube channel and they have a, they have a bunch of stuff but but the uh the Making art artisanal uh, junk food is by far my favorite. You know, like how do like how do you make a Twinkie but still have it have that like 
layer, that that layer of like <clears throat> stickiness on the end of the cake that every Twinkie has. We cannot allow that. <laughs> it was great. Bon appetit. Off my D&D &D kick? No, no, we're we're still playing. My my kids have kind of taken over all of our campaign time, though. They're writing their own campaigns now. So you have you you never gotten to do your skeleton one? I, I have it all written out, and now we're just waiting for the time that all four of us are there together. Okay. Which you know does not happen very often. Uh, the kids don't care. They'd rather do their own campaigns. Uh, well, they. You know, your, your children have abandoned you. Basically, which is fine. That's my that's your job as a parent. Make it so your children can abandon you. They're going to be the most well-prepared dorks when they get <laughs> in high school. Oh, yeah. Yeah, whatever you're into. But, uh, no, they yeah, they've been writing their own campaigns, and we've been having a ton of fun. Uh, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting my turn, basically, which is super lame. Uh, no, and lately, lately, speaking of my children abandoning me, Rich, uh -huh. um... They they recently rediscovered uh, Super Smash Brothers, and that's what they've been spending their video game time playing. You know, be before it was some other games here and there, yeah. but they've been hitting the Super Smash Brothers hard lately. And and yesterday, they were like they were like, why don't why don't you fight us, Dad? And I was like, oh no, I, I won't do that. You know, I'll I, I'll mop the floor with you kids. You don't understand. Uh. <laughs> You don't know, your old dad has some time in Super Smash Brothers, and they're like, "No, come on, we'll be on a team, and you have to fight the both of us." And I was like, "Ah, well then, maybe you stand a chance." Ha ha ha! Right? And of course, I haven't played it in ages. I have not played. Super I already know how the story is ending. You can just stop. I, it you doesn't just... end how you think it's gonna end. <laughs> oh yeah? It ends close to that, where uh, they they got me down to just one life left. Yeah. And I did significantly worse than I thought I was gonna do. I still won. Still one. I'm still number one. You you couldn't let your children just have it? No. They got to earn it, man. They got to earn it. Wow. What do you what do you want? What do you want? A, a bunch of a bunch of everyone gets a trophies? No, no, no. They got to work for it. Wow. They do their own dishes and they earn their Smash Brothers victories. That's how we roll. <laughs> Un unbelievable. <laughs> Fucking, fucking I know. unbelievable. I'm terrible. I make, yeah. them, I make my children earn their victories like, a, like an idiot. S satisfying yourself by beating your children in a video game. I. They gotta work for it's it. It's appalling. They gotta work for it. Uh, but the, by the way, they have been working for it and they came obnoxiously close. I have to really step up my game. <laughs> I, 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 like, I feel like I need to practice. Yeah. Like, like after they go to bed, I'm just gonna like get in a couple hours just to get my skill back. <laughs> really? No, no. Wow. No, I would. Wow. Uh, see, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go crazy. I don't know that I believe you. No, no, no. No, but like it, they're at a point now where the two of them working together could beat me. Like it could happen any day, and they're playing. They're getting in a lot more time than me, so it's gonna happen. Did I slap the controller out of their hands and scream how much they suck? No. No. It sounds like that's kind of what you did. No, we had a great time. And they they were they were just really happy by how close they came to winning. And they and they vowed to practice some more. How, so mag how magnanimous of you. Huh? How magnanimous of you. I don't know what magnanimous means. I've heard the word, but I'm not quite sure on the definition. Using context clues, I'm going to say, like, benevolent? What do you got for me here? I got none for you, Jack. You're not going to explain you to me what the word means? Uh, no, I'm not. Oh. I'm not. Why not? Because you're a horrible human being. I I'm teaching you my children... Humiliation. How to prepare, how to, def how to deal with loss, how to work for their goals, that not everything will be handed to them. I'm sorry for being a good parent. They, they took their loss very well. They said they're going to practice some more or they're going to try again later. I'm not going to hand them the victory, though. 
Rich doesn't know either. No, not really. I've heard it a bunch. <laughs> what? Magnanimous? Magnanimous. Oh, good. Well, good. Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping you would teach me something. <laughs> you damn it. Cock, cock. <laughs> That's right. You can you know, you come to previously recorded for the for the gameplay, you stay for the parenting advice. Absolutely. That's what everyone's here for. Exactly. Like and we're we're just having we're having a good time playing games together and when they do win because eventually like listen, they're just going they they're going to have far more time than me to get good. So when they do eventually win, I will take my loss very poorly. Very, I will <laughs> I will take it. Uh, I, I you know well played. I will I will make sure they know that they earned the victory, and I will I will be a gracious loser and hopefully teach them, you know, how to be a good sportsman. And I will also instantly demand a rematch. Yes, yeah. But also, to be fair, it's two against one. And then I'll say, well, take me on one-on-one. -on -one. One v one me. One v one me. <laughs> no. Exactly. And also, uh, Joe Kitty points out that my old hands don't work as fast as theirs do. It's Listen, I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose. I know I'm going to lose one of these days. Uh... And it's gonna be soon, because now they have a, they have a goal. <laughs> right, all all foxes, no items, final destination. Yes. No, we still play with all items though. We're we're playing um we're playing the uh Oh wow. What version are we playing? The Wii U version? We're playing the Wii U version, which has a really great feature, which is the ability to disable all of the traps on the level. So every level is basically final final destination. You can disable all of the weird shit that could kill you on the level, and it just turns it into a plain level with no, you know, mystery spinny doodad that pops up and kills you every once in a while. I think that's Brawl. Super Smash Bros. Brawl. But, uh... Which is, uh... Is really great, because they got annoyed by that, too. They got really annoyed by the fact that the levels would kill them and not the bad guys. So... Why, Jack? Uh, because that's the one we have. Because that's the Smash Brothers we have. Yes, my lord. We have word that an Does this game have a story? Yeah, who gives a shit? Yes, Lord Drogon. We have not seen him for several days. <laughs> Has the liberation feet of War, my lord. What, uh, you, you fight the bad guys. The the orcs have invaded. You have to shoot the orcs. Boom. Why does it need to be more involved than that? <laughs> Why? I'm, I'm sure it is in here, right? Yeah. Yeah, but no. These those are the bad guys that kill them all now. <laughs> the the story is about uh, your your you as the space marine rich uh -huh. are desperately trying to reunite with all the guns that can kill <laughs> the orcs. <laughs> You've lost all your guns, and you need to find them. Or maybe, maybe we have it all wrong. Maybe the story really isn't about you, the Space Marine. Maybe your advanced alien technology uh, actually in, uh, imprints your bullets with your DNA. And so you're not shooting the bad guys you're trying to make a home for your bullets all, all you need yeah. is a fun world and and some context for why you want to kill the things yeah 
and it could be as simple as we're at war. There are the things that are invading. Kill the things. Mm -hmm. And you know, more more story isn't necessarily a bad thing. But this seems to be seems to me like the kind of game that puts an emphasis on gameplay rather than story. Yep, which is fine. Fine. Uh, we might do Dead Cells for a review now that it has a release date. When is the release date? Do we know when it is? I don't know. Dead Cells does have an official release date. I'd be okay doing that for a review. What's coming up next, though? There's some big games coming out, like, next month, though. So we, we, got, we got some... Uh, I don't see an official release date. Oh, August 7th. Oh, well, maybe. Spidey, I think, is the end of August. Yeah. So we, we could have a, a Dead Cells uh, early August, Spider-Man late August. Sure, sure. That'd be nice. Well, let's see if we can get Lara Croft in there somewhere. No. Tom Raider. No. No, the old one. Oh, yeah, maybe. We, we talked about that. that maybe. Could a, that could be a fun, easy look back. Like, yeah, just play a few hours of Tomb Raider. Identity see if it still holds up. It probably doesn't. Eh, I don't know if I want to shit on something old just for the sake of shitting on something old. Oh, it's not for the sake of it. What eh, if it still does? Well, you go, oh, look at this game. It's, it's a new. It's, 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 it did some things, and they still kind of work. It's, you know, it looks a little like garbage, but they still kind of work. It'd be, it'd be fun. It'd be fun, and we'd get to make a ton of uh, uh, triangle boob jokes. Boom. Boom. That's where the money is. Triangle boob jokes. I, 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 I don't want to be the token hater. It's too, it's I, too late. I'm, it's not been token. It's too late. I don't well, want to go out of my way. We'll probably hate that. We should do it. I don't think we'll hate it, necessarily. I, I, uh, I doubt it's aged well. I doubt it's aged well. Could, well. All I'm saying is it could be interesting. could be an interesting look back. You don't want to be the token hater or the Tolkien hater. Right. Rich is already the Tolkien hater. You don't much care. Haters. Hate's a strong word. You don't much care for them Lord of the Rings. Not really. Yeah. Yeah. But hate's a strong word. Oh. Or you could play Tomb Raider Anniversary, which was essentially a remake of the first Tomb Raider. I, I think it, it, if if we were to do this, which apparently we're not, because Rich doesn't want to. I kind of don't. I, I, I think it, it would be more interesting looking back at the original PS1 Tomb Raider. Just to see. It was, it was a while ago. I need Solanus to come secure the Invictus while I divert to a priority alarm. On our way, Captain. Find us out. But but Lloyd Beats, how do we know what the good games are if we don't play them? We gotta we gotta play first, figure out if it's good later. Uh, it's a mad, 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 mad Max says, Jack, I love your phrase, everything is fine all the time. Did you pick it up while still on the farm? It seems like just the thing to say when a cow calf is breaching sideways, a fox is in the hen house, and Timmy is in the well. Catch my phrase? What phrase? Everything's fine all the time. Oh, okay. No, no, it's just. I, I probably started saying it here on stream just because it rhymes. Like it's not something I've said my whole life. Or maybe it is. I don't know. I don't pay attention to the things I say. If you've, if you've noticed. I just say them. I don't pay attention to them. The sixth doctor is about to regenerate. Which is your favorite doctor? Sixth. 
They're on like 13 now, aren't they? Yeah. This, yeah, the sixth doctor. What are you talking about? Dr. Hibbard? <laughs> no, this one's Pulaski. <laughs> Pulaski's coming to it. That's Wait, right. And for is Chick is Chick Doctor's time almost done? No, she hasn't started yet. Oh, okay. She's she's coming up, and yeah, and if you include War Doctor, she's number fourteen. She's Doctor number fourteen. Uh, which is my favorite Doctor. I. You, they, what didn't, they, they, didn't they say he could only do it like twelve times? They did, but then you know. They wrote that rule, and then they broke that rule by something They happening. didn't have a clever storyline to get around it? They just broke that, the rule? I think that was during the period in which I was not watching, and also I don't care. I'm sure there was a storyline involving breaking the rule. Okay. But, uh... Wait, does the war doctor not count as a doctor? I am Drogon. There's a Doctor Who chronological stream. They're about to be on Doctor 7. So I guess they're airing them all. Oh, okay. I get you. Well, neat. Uh, what, what they say is, if you are a fan of Doctor Who, you will fall in love with your first Doctor, and I think that's true. And so for me, it's Christopher Eccleston. He was the first Doctor that I saw. And that's your favorite? The one nobody else likes? He... He had a lot of hard work in front of him, okay? <laughs> he, ha he had... <laughs> he had the job of reviving the series after it had been gone for so very long. And he had a difficult task, but I, I like the way he played it. And so Eccleston is kind of my default favorite because he was my first Doctor, and I love the way he played it, like... This was after, like, the Time Wars, and this was after, like, a lot of big, intense stuff, and he played it very seriously, and I liked that, and I liked him in Rose. Uh, Tennant was obviously fantastic and is just a hair away from being the best by being just the best. Tennant is amazing, but I also really like Matt Smith. I think Matt Smith did some, uh, some really good stuff. He was part of some really good storylines, and... Uh, but I, you know, they're all they're all fun. All the new doctors are very fun. Eccleston was the the way Eccleston played it was was I think appropriate for the stories. And uh, but but Tennant was good and Matt Smith was all right. You know, Matt Smith uh, unfortunately for me also has the distinction of being the doctor when the stories went to shit as far as I'm concerned and so I know that's not Matt Smith's fault but I didn't much care for that Matt Smith also though has um, has Amy Pond which uh, was, was a, an amazing companion so you know zip a zip a zip Zibazabazoo. River Song is the worst character in any media. Yeah. <laughs> River Song? What? River Song. Uh, they, they, they did this fantastic thing where they, they set up this character. River Song in Doctor Who. Okay. And she... She showed up in this great episode about a, a, a dead library and and kind of these like ghosts that hid inside people's spacesuits. It was great. It was this fantastic little episode, right? And they introduced this character, River Song, and she was also a time traveler, like the Doctor. Uh -huh. And in fact, she was very familiar with the Doctor, but she knew the Doctor later. Yeah. And so, like, they kept on crossing paths, and they had this wonderful back and forth because she knew she knew the Doctor from later in life. Yeah. And he hadn't met her yet. And so, yeah. like, it was just this wonderful fantasy time travel -y stuff. And, you know, like, if she was just there for that one episode, she would have been fantastic. And then 
Um, they ruined her. They utterly, utterly ruined her. I'm sorry. They they turned this interesting character. In. How do they ruin the character? So what they did. <laughs> Uh, well, they, eventually they had to think of a backstory, right, to this character. You can put it off for as long as you fucking want. You, you got to put it for, off for, for fucking ever. But, well, I, so maybe that's just the problem, is they came up with the backstory. And their backstory for River Song was she is actually Melody Pond, the daughter of Amy Pond and Rory who then travels back in time so she's actually about the same age as Amy and Rory but then travels back in time again so she's older than them she also fights Hitler at one point it it, it um it gets very very messy she was also married to the doctor at one point but not really I thought the doctor was asexual. Uh, right, and that's the whole... Th there's a whole thing. The Oh, and the... Look, the thing Jack just shit on was the most epic and awesome story arc in the whole series. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Lloyd Beats, that was the start of the downfall. <laughs> that they, they 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 took this wonderful character and basically just gutted her entire history so that she she wasn't there one minute and she was there the next minute. It was oh it was just terrible. Just terrible. It was it was the, and and then they you know they kept wanting they kept using her more and more and then you know the more she's in it the less fun she is. Yes. It's like it's like they may if it's like if they would make a Boba Fett movie. <laughs> it's, okay, okay. The more you see, the less special they are. It's the same thing they did with the fucking Weeping Angels. It's the same thing they did with um. I mean, really, any good Doctor Who enemy, but. How come none of the doctors stick around for longer than a season or two? That's, uh, that's not... Lately, it's been true, hasn't it? No, no. Uh, Eccleston was there for one season. Yeah. And then Tennant was there for a good... How many seasons? Three or four. Yeah? Maybe more. Maybe more. You know, it's BBC, and so... All right. They don't do their episodes the same. Matt Smith was there for several seasons. And then Capaldi, I think, was there for... Two? Because I only hear about Doctor Who when they're changing doctors. It right. Seems like it happens all the damn time. Okay. Yeah. Ten, okay. There. Uh, according to chat, Tenant was four seasons. Matt Smith was three seasons, and I want to say that uh, Capaldi did two. So. Oh, Capaldi was in three seasons. Oh well, shit. So there you go. Well, it's it's usually a big deal when they change doctors. You know, it's it's their it's their um, it's England's franchise. This is the most British thing ever. Yeah, Doctor Who. It's it's like your sports team. Yeah, but somebody's like good at the job, and he wants to stick around for ten years. I wouldn't say no. I don't think they would say no either. I think everyone has kind of wanted to leave. Yeah, I think it's hard to say. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell, but also you know you gotta you gotta shake things up sometime. Uh, I you know what, and I I've seen very few classic Who. I, I tried watching a few episodes here and there because like you can find them, the old black and white mm -hmm. Doctor Who. And it's just, it's too... What about, like, 70s Doctor Who? You know what? I might enjoy 70s Doctor Who. I tried watching some of the old black and white ones, and it didn't... It was just too far away for me to to latch on to. Yeah. But maybe 70s Doctor Who. I've seen the Doctor Who movie, the made-for-TV Doctor Who movie. That was, like, made in the U.S., too, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that was the... 
that was the backdoor pilot right to try to see if american audiences could latch on to it and apparently the answer is no the answer was not yet my friend <laughs> not yet that's right and because of because of fires and whatnot there are some full episodes of doctor who that are completely lost to time i've heard of this that just will never will never appear again Uh, no, it's it's fun. You know, it's it's. Uh, I guess for for those who aren't into Doctor Who and who are maybe into sports, what I can say is, you know, getting a new doctor is like getting a new quarterback or a new pitcher for your sports team. It's exciting because you're not really sure what to expect, right? It's a whole new team. It's a it's a new. It's the same thing you're used to, but it's. I would just fi I would just find it scary. <laughs> well, it can be. Plenty that can go wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Ah, it's, you know, it's like it's like a nice it's it's like an event. It's a big old it's a big old event. New, old doctor dies, new doctor's born. It's always fun. I'm I'm and like I said, you know, I I've been out. Apparently, I've been out of Doctor. I've been out of Doctor Who now for so long. I don't even know how many years I've been gone. But that was just because of the production staff. And so I, I wouldn't care if it was still Peter Capaldi. Just because they have a new showrunner, I'm back in. Yeah. You know, it just so happens to come with a new Doctor. But I was ready to come back as soon as they got rid of... Um, uh, oh, what was his name? Davies? Was it Davy Russell Davies? So... So I'm very excited about Doctor Whom. Doctor Whom, huh? Doctor Whom. I, as I'm just reading, has Jack's kids gotten into Doctor Whom yet? Uh, I don't know if they would be into it. Moffat, thank you. Davies was before Moffat. Moffat was the ruiner of things. And now there's the new one who did Broadchurch. My my kids aren't my kids are still at the age where if a movie's not animated, they generally don't care. We're getting them we're getting them there. You know Even something like Star Wars? You know what? They are they are not really into Star Wars. Porgs, 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 I thought. They were they're into porgs. We've actually asked them if they wanted to you know, Last Jedi is on Netflix now. Yeah. And we're like, hey, you guys want to rewatch Last Jedi? We can see the porgs again, and they go, nah. But then we're like, you want to watch all the Jurassic Park movies? And they're like, fuck yeah. Not all right. Not enough blood. All so right. We're, we're, we're finding their movies. They're, they're super into the Jurassic Park movies. We're actually going to go uh, see the new the new Jurassic Park. What is the uh, Fallen Kingdom? Yeah. They're really excited about that. They're really excited about that because we've been binging all of the Jurassic Park movies. And did you ever see um, World No Jurassic World No. We recently rewatched that as part of the binge. Yeah. And uh, this might be a little controversial, but it's not as bad as I remember. That's not <laughs> having an opinion on opinion on anything is controversial. I'm so, oh, you're right. You're right. <laughs> the like when I when I saw Jurassic World for the first time, the only Jurassic Park movie that was in my memory was, of course, Jurassic Park. Yeah. But after watching Jurassic Park, then The Lost World, then Jurassic Park Three, Jurassic World is not the worst of those movies. <laughs> in fact, it's the second best of those movies. Obviously, second by a long yeah. stretch, but it's no worse. In, in fact, it's better than Lost World and Jurassic Park 3. But, it, like, if you're coming right from Jurassic Park, Jurassic World is going to be hot, hot garbage. But if you're coming off of Jurassic Park 3, Jurassic World is fine. It's, it's actually, like, it's, it's pleasant. <laughs> so, we're... 
we're we're pretty hyped to see the the fallen kingdom. Seems to me like you're just lowering your standards, says Custos Deliri. Yes. Yeah, yes, absolutely. It's just it's just a game of comparisons. Ah. Oh. Got caught in it. I mean, by the way, that that wasn't so much like a clipping on the on the yeah. on the terrain. Like I really don't think you could step over that wearing that armor. <laughs> like you just can't lift your legs up high. Right. <laughs> 